Good morning, and what a great day to be alive. Welcome to favornetwork.net to the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Oscar T. Moses. I serve as the senior pastor here at Mount Hermon, located at 7848 South Normal in Chicago, on the south side. We are the Traditional Church. That is, we are the traditional church with the progressive members, membership, and message. Every Sunday morning, a message of hope is preached from the Mount Hermon Baptist Church. It is our prayer that if you are unsaved, that through this telecast, that you would come to know Jesus Christ. Once again, welcome to Favor Network. Bring in your scattering thoughts, and let's enter into worship. God bless you.
How many of you know that Jesus Christ is able? Have you ever watched somebody else get the blessing that you prayed for? What do you do? How do you handle life when you, God makes you wait? Because sometimes God's timeline stretches, stretches beyond our patience. And when we don't see it, when we think we should see it, we become frustrated. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God sometimes makes us wait. Look at somebody and say, God sometimes makes us wait. And I don't know who this message is for today. Maybe I'm preaching to myself today, but I just have a sneaky suspicion that there are other people that feel the same way that I do. That job you're waiting on, that that promotion you're waiting on, that child you're waiting on, that man, that woman. You, anybody know what I'm talking about? Don't, don't look at me like I'm crazy now. Bow your head, close your eyes. You ask the Lord to open up your heart. Uh, don't be judgmental today. Just open up your heart. Ask the Lord to give you what you need, that you might be both receptive and responsive to the preaching of his word. Whatever it, it is that you need on today, you ask the Lord to open up your heart that you might receive it through his word today. Eternal God, our Father, we come this morning to thank you for yet another expression of your goodness. We thank you for grace and mercy. We thank you for things being as well as they are. We thank you. And so, Fathers, we come to the preaching hour. We ask that, I ask that you would allow me to decrease, that you might increase. I pray your blessings upon your people, that their hearts would be both receptive and responsive to the preaching of your word. I'm thine, O oh Lord. Everything I am, everything I've got. Try me and see if I can be completely yours. Use me for your glory. For your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Turn with me to, oh, I'm sorry. Are we ready? Empire. This is my Bible. There are many like it, but this one is mine. It is my weapon. It is my road map in enemy country. In my Bible is found the plan of salvation. Romans 10 and 9 says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It is by my humility towards our Christ, hospitality within our congregation, hard work within our community that the unsaved would be one to Christ. Turn with me, if you would, to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. When you get it, say, I've got it. If you don't have it, say, hold on. I wish you would up here in the choir. <laughs> Starting at verse number 1, we'll climax or conclude at verse number 9. We'll interchange the verses. Verse 1 reads, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. I want you to understand what that verse just said. It said that an angel went down a certain season into the pool, the pool that they were waiting around, and he troubled the water. And it says, whoever got in the pool first, they were healed. 
of whatsoever deeds, disease he had. Verse 5 says, and a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Number seven, verse seven says, the impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Let's read verse nine together. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Amen. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand. If you don't mind, grab a neighbor by the hand, look them in the eye like you love the Lord, and say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor, good to see you in church, good to see you in church, good to see you in church alive. Good to see you in church. Tell them Pastor Moses needs your prayers, and all of your amens. Today's lesson, what to remember while you're waiting on your turn. Point at somebody and say, what to remember while you're waiting on your turn. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, you pray with me and for me. We'll be out of here soon. Pastor Alfred Salisbury just walked in the door, and I want him to put down whatever he's got and come on up here to the pulpit. Amen. A good friend and brother, beloved pastor of the New Testament. Baptist Church, and is also a good friend and brother. I want him to say something to us after the message on this morning. Say amen for Pastor Salisbury. <clears throat> John chapter 5. Jesus is going to a feast in Jerusalem. And as he's going to this feast, he, he comes to Jerusalem and he comes upon the sheep gate that has a porch, a pool, and surrounding that pool, which is called Bethesda, meaning mercy, there are five porches. Tell somebody five porches. Those five porches were filled with people that were sick. Everyone was sick. The Bible says there were some that were halt, there were some that were lame, there were some that were blind, there were some that were withered, but they all were stretched out around this pool. And they were waiting there because they believed in their custom that season, seasonally an angel would come down to that pool. And that angel would trouble the water, cause it to bubble, to move, and to stir up. And their belief was that the first person that step in the pool would be healed of whatever disease that they had. I don't want you to, to miss that. There were sick folk all around that pool. And the, they believed that the first person that got in the pool would be healed of whatever illness that they had. Jesus had came to that pool. And when he got to the pool, he saw a man. Out of all those people, the text says Jesus saw one man. There are a whole bunch of sick folk there. But he sees this one man, and verse 6 says he, he knew how long he had been in that condition. The text has already said that he's been there for 38 years. Don't miss that. He's been laying by this pool for 38 years, waiting for his turn to get in the pool. But Jesus sees him, and he sees how long he's been in that position and Jesus goes to the man, utters five words. Wilt thou be made whole? What a strange question for Jesus to ask somebody who's been sitting there sick, lame for 38 years. And the man's response was, sir, I have no man to put me in the water. Every time I try to get in, another gets in before me. And Jesus tells the man, rise Pick up your bed, bed and walk. After 38 years of waiting by that pool, 
after 38 years of laying in that, after 38 years, y'all, Jesus says to this man, rise, pick up your bed, and walk, and the man walks on home. Let's look at this text a little closely. Because if you look at this text, you'll discover that this man is dealing with at least three problems here. The first thing that he's dealing with is age. Look at somebody and say age. The text says that he's been at the pool for 38 years. Now, we don't know how old he was when we got to the pool, but we can already imply that he wasn't no baby when he got there. And, and giving consideration to the fact that the average lifespan of a man in this day was only 40 years old, he recognized his time was running out. He's been at this pool, I wish I had some help in here, for 38 years. Been waiting. Watching time go by. And brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, whether you want to Believe it or not, we're all getting older. Or, or you might be young and robust right now. You, you, you might be able to run marathons, but, but I guarantee you there's an old person coming to your house look just like you. At the tender age of 48 years old, and I'm still fine, but you know, some things I just can't do no more, Pastor Salisbury. Age has become a factor. There are some things that I can't do now that I could do when I was 28 years old. Look at somebody and say, this man is dealing with age. But not only is he dealing with age, he's also dealing with an ailment. So the text says that he has been laying at this pool for 38 years. The text does not tell us what the nature of the ailment is, but it does say that he was unable to walk. For 38 years, he's dealing with age, he's dealing with ailment, but then he's also dealing with anxiety. Because every time he tries to get in the pool, somebody else beats him in there. He's waiting on his turn. Every time the opportunity arises, somebody gets the blessing. that he's been praying for. Jesus comes to this man and he says five words, wilt thou be made whole? And I want to suggest that Jesus had to ask the question because some of us in the situation that we're in, we really don't want that to change. Although it may look bad, although others may see it as a bad situation, but some of us enjoy being the victim. I knew I wasn't going to get too many amens on that. So some of us don't want things to change because if things really change, you have to take some responsibility for some areas in your life that you don't want to take no responsibility. Don't put your head down and make you look guilty. Tell, tell somebody, we've got to want change. Do you, you really want to change? Does anybody here really want to change? He said, wilt thou be made whole? This man, he doesn't answer the question. He starts giving excuses. Sir, I have nobody to put me in the water every time I try to get a, another gets in before me. There are three excuses I see in that. Could you wake, wake up and write this down? I'm almost through, y'all, I promise. The, the, first, the first excuse that I see in this is abandoning. Sir, I have no man. He said, I don't have nobody to help me. Nobody's coming to make an extra trip to try to get me in the water. He's dealing with this issue of abandonment, but he's not the first one to deal with issues of abandonment. Elijah dealt with the issues of abandonment. First Kings 19, when he says, Lord, I'm the only one that's left. All your other prophets have forsaken you. Paul understood what abandonment was. For he says, at my last trial, no man stood with me. All forsook me. I I'm looking at some folk that are looking back at me. If you're honest, you know what it feels like to be abandoned. You know what it feels like to need somebody and nobody comes to your rescue. I'm looking for the real folk in here. 
that's not trying to look too holy this morning. I, I wonder is there about five people, don't mind raising your hand and say, Reverend, I know what you're talking about. I've been in some situations where nobody understood me. Nobody came to my rescue. I was all by my doggone self. But if you've ever been there before, you're still in good company. Because I know a man from Galilee that said in the garden of Gethsemane, not that said on the cross of Calvary, Eli, Eli, la my sabbatana, which means, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? He's dealing with abandonment, and he's also dealing with frustration. Let church say frustration. First, he's dealing with abandonment. Sir, I have no man to put me in. Every time I try, that means that he at least made some effort. By virtue of the fact that he said, when I try, it did not mean he just sat there. It meant that he tried, but he wasn't successful. And now he's frustrated. Ooh-wee. I pray y'all getting this message. Thank you, students. I, I know what it's like to be frustrated. I, I know what it's like to, to, to pass the 13 years, to keep teaching the same thing over and over again. And it seems like nobody is getting the message. I, I know what it's like to be frustrated. When I know some people that don't care about the church they serve, don't, don't love the people that God has sent them to serve, but God just sends to keep on elevating them, and here I am frustrated. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He says, I feel abandoned. I have no man to put me in. He's frustrated every time I try. Somebody, and then he's dealing with anxiety. Entitlement. He says, somebody else keeps getting in before me. In other words, they got my blessing. The thing I prayed for is what they seem to get with ease. He's dealing with frustration. He's dealing, he's dealing with frustration. He's not the first one to deal with frustration. Jeremiah dealt with frustration in the Old Testament. He said, Lord, I'm tired of your people. I'm going to give it up. Lord said, you can't give it up. Because you didn't pick it up. <laughs> he said, I chose you. He's dealing with entitlement. Watching other folk get the blessing. Asaph dealt with entitlement. He said, Lord, you've been good to Israel. But as for me, my feet is almost slipped. I became envious of the wicked. I, I saw other folk prospering, and it seemed like I'm struggling. It seemed like I pray, I go to church, I read my Bible, but that Negro down the street who never darkens the doorway of a church keep on getting blessed every way which blues. I'm getting tired of it. He's dealing with entitlement. That was my blessing. Amen. He starts making excuses. Abandonment, say abandonment. He's dealing with frustration, say frustration. And he's dealing with entitlement, say entitlement. Why, why, preach, why preach this sermon? First of all, John gives us this text to show us the spiritual uh, condition of Israel at the time. Uh, he says, Israel is spiritually lame, they're halt, they're blind to their own sins, their hands are withered, they cannot do the work that I've called, they're waiting on the Messiah, they're, 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 in, a bad, they're in a spiritual bad condition. Now that's scripturally, uh, but, but, but seasonally, I'm preaching this sermon because there are sometimes God just makes you wait. And the problem with waiting on God's time is that sometimes God's timeline stretches beyond our patience. We want it when we want it. We want the change when we want the change. But God says, not right now. If I give it to you right now, you wouldn't know how to handle it. That's why sometimes we have to learn how to thank God for unanswered prayers. 
Because some of the prayers that we ask God, we don't need what we ask for. We just want it. But he knows that we don't need it, so he does not give it to us. And I'm wondering, is there anybody here that can thank God for some prayers that he didn't answer? I'm looking at somebody here today that, that prayed for that man 20 years ago. Lord didn't give him to you. And you ran into the Negro the other day. No teeth. No, oh, let me say it. No teeth, no jaw. And all you can say is hallelujah. Thank you, God, for not answering that prayer. I'm preaching this sermon because sometimes God will elevate people that you don't think deserve to be elevated to see how you're going to respond. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know how to respond right now. He didn't just bust me out. Sometimes he'll do it. The person that you think I is least deserving what you prayed for. Here they come. With the answer to the prayer that you've been praying for. And because you don't know how to handle it right, you get an attitude with them because of what God has blessed them with. You ain't got to say, man, I've experienced this in my own life. If God has blessed you, I'm thanking God. I'm doing backflips for you. I'm happy for you, boo-boo. Because that means if God is blessing my neighbor, come on and help me out here. I need about 10 folk don't mind standing up and thanking God that, that God is blessing my neighbor. He's in the neighborhood. Is there anybody here that can thank God for somebody else's blessing? Look at somebody and say, I thank God for your blessing. I'm not going to hate. Look at them. Tell them I'm not going to hate. Tell them I'm going to congratulate and help you celebrate. Pastor Salisbury, Lord bless you. I'm happy for you, man. I, I want to be around people that the Lord is blessing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I Listen, I, I, I don't mind, I don't mind uh, drinking from the same punch bowl with you. Eating from the same lazy Susan with you in your celebration. Because if I can celebrate you when God has lifted you up, then God sees my heart is not jealous, is not envious. And he, hey, now you're ready. Now you're ready. Now you're ready. Now you're ready. How do you handle life? I'm almost done, y'all. I promise you. How do you handle life when you have to wait on the Lord? What do you do when you watch others get elevated and you're dealing with abandonment, you're dealing with frustration and entitlement? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Three things I want to give you, and I'm done. I promise. First thing you got to do is you got to position yourself. Look at somebody and say, position yourself. This man wanted to get healed, and he knew that the healing was somewhere around the pool. And so he figured, if I'm going to get healed, Liz, he said, I got to be somewhere around the pool. When the it wouldn't make no sense to be him being out at the fish market. And he's waiting for the healing by the pool. <laughs> God Almighty. So, so this, this position is not so much of a location as much as it is a posture. It, it's really a posture of humility. While, while you're waiting on God to elevate, while you're waiting on God to show up in your life, you've got to first of all assume a posture of humility. Can I give you a side order of scripture to give you that? 
First Peter 5 and 6 says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. That's, that's not your time. It's not my time. It's not Chrono's time. It's, it's what you call Cairo's time. Cairo's time is a time, a, spe- a period that's pregnant with eternal potential that has everlasting reward. When God gets ready, you got to humble yourself. Until you humble yourself, you might be waiting for a long time. Look at somebody and say, you might have to learn how to wait. Go on, hallelujah. Somebody in the got happy back there. <laughs> I got one witness. <laughs> Tell somebody, position yourself. But number two, you got to prepare yourself. Look at somebody and say, prepare yourself. Teacher told me when I was a little boy that poor preparation leads to a poor performance. In other words, it's better to have an opportunity and be prepared than not, better not to have an opportunity to be prepared than to have one and not. You know understand what I'm saying. Get yourself together while you're waiting on the Lord. Do what you got to do to get ready for. I, I, I believe if the Lord gave some of us the blessing that we've been praying for right now, we wouldn't know what to do with it. Because we have not prepared ourselves to receive the blessing that God has in store for us. Tell somebody, you got to prepare yourself. You, you can't walk in the job on Monday and expect to be elevated to management by Friday. <laughs> I remember when I did accept my call to, to ministry, Pastor Salisbury, Reverend Gant, my father, made, grandfather made me make a whole year. Made me wait for a whole year. So get yourself together. Prepare yourself. Spiritually, go back and pray. Because when you get up here, you're in the deep water now. He said, if you take it serious, then God will use you. But this is nothing to play with. I've had people come, want to start preaching on one week, want you to ordain them the next week. And then want you to send them out for a church the next week. Prepare yourself. I'm sorry, this ain't going to shout y'all today. Tell somebody, position yourself. Tell somebody, prepare yourself. Get not weary in well-doing, for you'll reap in due season. If you don't faint, tell somebody, don't throw in the towel. Then you got to pace yourself. It simply means wait. The psalmist says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Can I ask the question this morning as I close this little message? Is there anybody here that's been waiting on something? Anybody here waiting on the Lord to move in your life? Then then, then shake your neighbor's hand. tell, Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I know he's able to do it for me. And tell him, neighbor, he's able to do it for you, too. But but, but caution me. Let me caution you because we can't always get envious of what we see God doing in somebody else. You don't know what that person gone through. You don't know what they went through to get whatever they gotten. Don't, 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 Don't start getting envious because you see somebody got something. You don't know what they sacrificed. You don't know who they stole from. You don't know who they hurt. You don't know what they did to get what they got. By the way, grass ain't always greener on the other side. You remember that movie, Tyler Perry? Uh, Oh, wow, I can't think of the name of the movie. Jill Scott was married to, uh, why why did I get married? That's it, that's it. Jill Scott was married to the big head fella, Mike. And um, Mike was just terrible. He was, he, was, he was cruel. He was mean. He cheated on her. Uh, and Jill, Jill Scott was a good woman. Loved the Lord. And this guy just, he took her through the ringer. You know, bring other women around. And finally, he left her. She was a woman that cleaned, cooked, cared for him. And he married this woman who didn't clean, cook, 
or care. That was why I get married once. But you remember what happened in, yeah, come on in here with me. Why did I get married too? By this time, uh, Jill Scott is married Sheriff Troy. Look at all the ladies in the house. Strong, strapping. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most y'all said all morning long. I got a witness here. And Sheriff Troy loves her, cares for her. And then they get together. Why did I get married too? That was in, in first one, you know, uh, uh, her husband Mike saw what he wanted. He got it. She was fine, figure like a Coca-Cola bottle. Y'all ain't saying amen on that. Yeah. Amen. And so that was why did I get married one. But then why did I get married two? Now she's married to Sheriff Troy. And Mike is married to, uh, uh, don't call it a thing. Don't even write. To, the, to the young, to the, to, the, to the lady. To the lady. And uh, by this time, Mike is realizing that the grass is not greener always on the other side. As a matter of fact, Sometimes it may not even be grass. It may be astroturf. It may be false grass. He realizes now that he gave up what he had to get what he really didn't want. But Jill Scott, she learned that if you wait on the Lord, and be of good courage. Things may not happen when you want them to happen, but when God shows up, tell somebody he'll show out. He'll do better than you ever expected him to do. He'll lift you beyond your wildest dreams. He'll place you places you've never been before. I need about 10 folk, don't mind standing up and waving your hand and say, when God shows up, he will show up. I'm done. I quit. I was at church one time. Preacher was preaching so long. And they said, when is he going to finish? And one preacher said, he finished now. He just won't quit. So I'm going to quit. When I tell you this, that this man was waiting on his turn. But all of us in here, there's one turn that we're not going to miss. Just as sure as you're living right here today, death is coming to all of our homes. That's one appointment that you're not going to miss. Oh, it may be in the morning. It may be in the noonday, it may be when the sun has gone down, but tell somebody, that's one turn you're not going to miss. But just as this man was waiting for the angel to stir this water, we're waiting on somebody, but it's not no fictitious angel. We're waiting for God's son to come back. One of these old days. Said it won't be long. I don't know when, I don't know where, but I know he's coming back again. And I wish I had a witness here that didn't mind waving your hand and, and say, I thank God for giving me a little patience. He showed me how to wait on him uh, and be of uh, good courage. And I believe I got a witness here that don't mind waving your hands uh, and say, Lord, uh, I'm going to stand right here. And I'm going to wait uh, until my change comes. Is there anybody in here that don't mind waving your hand and say, Father, woo, I thank you for giving me the patience uh, to wait on you uh, until my change comes. Uh, then do me this favor this morning. Uh, grab that neighbor by the hand uh, and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, say, neighbor, I know a man that's from Galilee. Uh, when I was in trouble, uh, he set me free. Uh, Son of David, ooh, seed of Abraham.
stone you out of a mountain meek and numble lamb it ain't anybody in here that don't mind waving your hand and say father I stretch my hands to thee no other help I know if thou withdraw that shelf from me whether shall I go ain't he alright I said ain't he alright I got one more thing and I'm in my seat Grab that neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but neighbor, square your shoulders, plant your feet, and stay right there until your change come. One of these old days, I don't know when, one of these old days, your change is going to come. Uh, ain't it all right? See, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, 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 yeah. I'm done. We're standing all over the sanctuary. With your hands bowed and your eyes closed. I really don't know what part of the camp you're in today. Don't know what you're going through. Don't know what you're waiting on. I don't know if you're dealing with anxiety, age, or ailment. Don't know whether you're dealing with frustration, abandonment, or entitlement. But we serve a God that's able to deliver, heal, and set free. What you have to do is position yourself. You gotta prepare yourself. You gotta pace yourself. Lord, I pray right now for that woman, that man, that boy or girl that's wrestling with the decision. As we extend the privilege of the church, they might be here today wrestling with whether they should come join the church, give the preacher their hand. But more than that, that they would give you their heart. I pray for them that they would make a decision today to accept you as Lord and Savior in their lives. Father, where I fall short, I know that you're able to give the increase. So as we extend the privilege of the church, maybe for someone who's out of church, been away from church, need to reconnect with church. If you're here this morning, this invitation is given with you in mind. And we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. If you're here today, won't you come? And the church said amen. Church said amen again. Come on, say it like you really mean it. Amen. Let's do this right quickly. Um, I'm going to ask Dr. Moses. Let me say before she comes, uh, let me on the behalf of my wife and myself. Say thank you. of the Holy Spirit. We certainly pray that the word on today empowered you, encouraged you, and enlightened you. It is our prayer that you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Our doors are open. Our address is 7848 South Normal here on the south side of Chicago. Our phone number is area code 773-874-3510. Or you can contact us by email. Our email address is Herman, H-E-R-M-O-N, at Ameritech, that's A-M-E-R-I-T-E-C-H dot net. Every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, we offer, offer our Christian Growth Academy. And every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we have the Hour of Power, a power-packed prayer meeting. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to www.favornetwork.net. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday morning. God bless you. People grow because of that prayer line. Um, the young people that never prayed publicly before out of Joshua generation, young people, young Joshua generation, uh, members were studying the word to get prepared for the, the, the morning devotion.